18.8449622. What are my two numbers? 228 point what? 35, 228 point, all right, now I'll round this, what is that? 36. 36, and what's the other number? 3, 256.05. That'll work. And when you feel free to round that to point four, these are final answers. So you can round them. That's it. I encourage you to write it both ways. What were the units on these? Do you want to put New the units? Newton. These were Newtons. Do you want to put Newtons in here? This is Newtons. You can put Newtons in Newtons. And we're going to interpret this. This was the force. We're talking about with that resin cement, right? The, they called it the strength, tensile strength. But it really is important. The tensile strength of this, of that cement they got in there. How strong is it? Is it going to hold that teeth in, you know, that crown in the, in the mouth? Yeah, 256. Really good. Oh, thank you so much. You bet. Thank you so much. There's a 256 point there. Awesome. Everyone good with this? Mm -hmm. So now, that's A, that's B. I'm going to erase this. Letter C. And we can interpret this in your own words. I'll leave this up here, by the way. Can you interpret this in your own words? So with 90% confidence... Oh, I'm going to write that. With 90% confidence... Interpret. With 90% confidence, I'll put a comma. Uh -huh. The what mean. Good. Is it a sample mean or population? Population mean. The population mean. If you want to write after this word mean, everyone, if you want to put tensile strength of the teeth, and the, I mean of the crowns and all that stuff, you know, this it's actually cement. But the population mean is between what two numbers? 228.36. Comma. 256. And 256.05. Are we 100% confident? No, but we're 90% confident. And I always like to, I always like to repeat what this means. I am 90% confident. This means everyone, if I did 100 more sample sizes, like 72 teeth, with a bunch of dents over and over and over again, what I'm saying is, 90 out of 100 of those experiments, all right, would co come up with X bars that are between these two numbers. That's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. 90 out of 100 would capture a number like this, they'd be inside here, all right? That's what we mean. So we're saying we're 90% confident that the population mean for that resin cement is between those. Cool? But that's what it means, right? What do you mean by 90% confidence? It means that we did 100 more of these, get 72 teeth, get 72 teeth, get 72 teeth, keep doing this, 90 out of 100 of those confidence intervals are, would actually capture this, you know, this true population mean we're looking for, and they'd all have this number, you know, that their X bar would be somewhere inside there. Does so that make sense? Is this T distribution available in Google? Yeah, it's yeah, it does. It does. Awesome. Hey, I'm going to erase this, letter D. What's the margin of error? What's the margin of error? 256 uh, minus that. Margin of error is right there, right? Right, right, right. Oop, after the plus minus, which is? <laughs> plus or minus 13.84 Newtons. Let it read, everyone. You okay if I just read this to you? You're going to answer it. Let me know if you need to repeat this. This is going to be the same letter read from last class. And here it goes. If these researchers did this experiment again and they wanted to decrease the margin of error, what should they do? Increase them. Yep. I'll repeat it. If the researchers wanted to do this experiment again, with the teeth and the crowns and all that, but their goal was to decrease the margin of error. To decrease the margin of error, what should they do? And the answer, 
They should increase the sample size. Good job. Increase the sample size. Increase N. Jack up N. Get more teeth. You need more than 72 teeth. That's what you need. Don't I get that? Ought to be happy. We're not doing an F on this, dude. She's like, oh, cool. We're not doing an F on this. Now, before we move on to the next problem, you know exactly what we got to do. Come on, that was a lot of math in there, right? You saw the math I was doing with the tables and stuff. Isn't there probably a faster way? <laughs> and what's great is all 83s and all 84s have this. So you know this is where you're going to find out, like, oh, now we're good. <laughs> oh, we're now we're all good. Cool? So we're going to go back. I'm going to go back to this board, and I'm going to pretend like I'm going to use the fast way to get all these answers. Sound good? You know, I want to motor through this, like, within one minute. A lot of students like this. That means I'm not going to do any of that what? Multiplication of this times the standard deviation, all that stuff, right? True? I'm like, technology, facilitate this for me. I'll still do my interpretation, so I'll leave this up here. But I'm going to pretend like I don't have B or D or E. Sound good? Can I erase? All right, so everyone look. I don't know what B is. There's C. I don't know what this is, I don't know what this is, and I don't know what this is. D asks for the margin of error, B asks for what's the confidence interval, and E asks what should you do if you need to uh, decrease the margin of error. Well, we already know that answer. What's that going to be? Increase the Yeah, we're going to increase the sample size. So I'll just put that down. All right. So which two are we looking for, really? B and D. All right, let's go over here. So we'll go to the calculator. This is a rock and roll button here. We love this thing. It's in the stat menu. It's in the test. All right. So I'm going to hit the lights. Oh, gosh. Please use this. All 83 and 84 calculators have this. Stat. Test. What are we looking for? Interval, right? Last class, 9.1, we did something called a one-prop Z interval. So, Denora, I do want to point that out. We did a one prop Z interval for 9.1. It stood for one proportion zero. Now we're looking for something called a T interval. Because you know we're using what? T. Where is T interval? I still don't see it right there. Number, number five, one prop Z. No, no, so, I'm yeah. looking for a T interval. It's not even up there right now. So, I got to scroll and scroll and scroll and. Yay, there it is. It's number eight. Someone see it? Now, I think this is self-explanatory. Watch. When I hit the screen, you're going to be like, look at all the numbers we wrote down. Tell me what to do. Everyone, I'm hitting number eight. I highly recommend this. Now, you got data and stats. Data would be like you went out tomorrow, collected data, did stuff yourself, and did your own project. Well, we're just getting the statistics off this textbook from the calculus. So we're going to use stats. I like that. What's X for? The 42.8. What's SX? 70.6. Seventy point six. I'm gonna agree? Mm -hmm. Same standard deviation. What's N? What's lowercase n? 72. 72? Everyone knows what to do. What about here? What do I do here? A lot of times this is 0.95, but on this particular problem it was what? 0.90. It was 0 0.90. What do y'all think? Now this should give us the answer, right? What's the confidence interval? There it is. I'm going to hit it up here. That was pretty easy, right? What's the confidence interval? 228.33. What's the other number? Now, is this a little off from what we had before? Yeah, because I used a T-score of what? This sheet, Denora. This is even more accurate. Right? But both answers are totally fine because some used a sheet. I have to make, you know, make sure I'm okay with both of these. Because it is estimates, and that's what we do in stats. All right, now I'm stuck, though. Sad face. So when I'm going to hit this, turn this off. Let's say I'm on a test. I used the shortcut. Me, I like that button. That was it. I didn't have to do any math. Oh, thank you for giving me a comment. And I go and I interpret it. With 90% confidence, the population mean is between these two numbers right here. Oh, and I'll adjust for the new calculations I just got. That's a 0.07. All right. Woo, okay. I'm stuck now. How do I get the margin of error? All right. Subtract the upper from, sorry, subtract the lower from the upper and divide by two. That'll work. And when he goes, this is our way, it works every time. He goes, take this, subtract this, and divide by two. 
You can do that. Here's another one. I'm going to draw a picture. You know how I like pictures. That's the low end, right? What's the high end? What's the highest end? 256.07. Who's smack dab in the middle? Me, 242. So you can use yards method. You may prefer to use, you take this, you subtract this, you divide by two. Or if you want, you could just take the high end and subtract to what? Low end. Because that's a margin of error. Your margin of error is from the middle out. You can go here to here, or this minus this, and you will find your what? Margin of error. So Denor, everyone, no more set base. That's all I gotta do is just take that, subtract that, or do what Art said, this minus this, but then you'd have to divide by two, right? I, here's the biggest error. I get students who only subtract these. They doubled it. They just doubled the margin of error. The margin of error is only a portion on one side, right? The margin of error is from here to here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take this number, I'm going to subtract that number, and I'll get my margin of error. What is 256.07 minus 242.2? 13.8487, is that what it is? Ah, it was even more error, but an 87, you want to make the point nine? Anyone care about this? Awesome. Hey, uh, the remainder of class, I'm just going to talk about 10.1, which is an intro to hypothesis testing. Can I raise? Mm -hmm. Hey, summary for your notes. What are the cool buttons from that test menu? For 9.1, who is the cool button? Letter what? Letter A. And what was the cool button for 9.2? Number what? Number 8. Anyone got that? I'll put quotations around it. Those are the rock and roll buttons from that menu. Now for the remainder class, this will be fun. I am going to introduce you. We're not going to perform a hypothesis. I'm just going to introduce you to it, OK? So we're going to do a setup of a hypothesis test. This is called Introduction to a Hypothesis Test. Just put intro to hypothesis test. Now this course gets a lot of fun. Because then when you leave this course and go perform your own hypothesis test. Hypothesis test, a hypothesis is an educated guess. Do you know that? That's what it is. A hypothesis is just an educated guess. But in this course, you learn the statistics. We can use the statistics, all right? And we can see if something's maybe statistically significant or not. The results we get. Which could say, hey, I was kind of right with my gut feeling. So I'm going to give you an example. All right. When we set up a hypothesis test, there's two things we put. We put something with an h sub 0, and we put something with an h sub 1. This is called the null hypothesis. That's called the null hypothesis. That's called the status quo. And what do you mean by the status quo? That's what's going out there. That's, that's what we know about in the world. That's what everyone tells me. That's what my mom told me. That's what my job told me. That's what my government told me. That's what my company tells me. That's the actual population mean, or that's the actual population population. Pro, excuse me, population proportion. That's the status quo. This, though, is going to be the alternative hypothesis. All right. That's your educated guess. That is your educated guess. So I'm going to give you an example. Here's the story. All right. Everyone, let's say. I've been a nurse for 25 years, right? <coughs> Every daggone day, except when I'm off work. And when you know what I'm doing? I mean, I'm doing a lot of things in my job. But one thing I'm doing, I'm taking body temperatures. People come in ill and all this. I've got sick babies, etc. But I'm always taking a body temperature. Now, who in this room knows what's going out there in the world, what we've been told by parents, relatives, friends? What is the status quo for the mean body temperature. 98 something. 98.6, that's what I was told. All right, now that would be given to you in a problem. They would state that in the first sentence. They always state the status quo in the first sentence. So the first sentence would read this on them, all right? It's well known that the mean body temperature of human beings is reported as 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So up here, everyone, the word mean came up. Now we're talking about a population. So I'm gonna use this mu symbol, because that's a mean for a population. I'm going to put an equal, and I'm going to put 98.6 degrees per. 
So I'm setting up a hypothesis test. That's what I'm doing. So what we're doing right now, Ron, you and I are setting up just the initial part of a hypothesis test. The author felt it was important that they just take one section of the book to make sure students know how to set this up. So what goes in here, I've got an H sub zero, and that's called, you can say H sub zero. Some statisticians and scientists like to say H naught. Have you ever heard that before? H naught. So if you took a physics class, they go the initial velocity, and they go, that's V naught. Mm -hmm. They go V naught. They just use the word naught for that. So you can call that H naught or H sub zero. Yes, some students call it hell. I don't <laughs> care if it's okay if you call it hell. I know. Oh, all right. That's the hell. But the mu is equal to 98.6, that's the status quo, right? And when every time, you're going to use the same, same symbol right here. So if I put a mu here, what goes here? Mu. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to use the same, same, you know, they call it a parameter. This has to be the same number here. All right, so I'm going to leave a box here right now. Really like, what goes here? What symbol goes there? It's one of three things. It could be a greater than symbol. It might be a less than, less than symbol. Or equal to. You know? And if you want to put equal signs with the it doesn't matter. Or the last one I want, they might put a not equal to symbol. All right? And you go, which one are they going to put? It depends. It depends on the research. So can I finish my story about the nurse? You're going to tell me what to put there, all right? So the first sentence, Autumn, I'll repeat it. It is well known that the population mean body temperature for human beings is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? A nurse over at Anne Arundel Medical Center believes that it's less than that. Which symbol do you think I'd use? All the Alternative hypothesis. I'll repeat the second sentence. A nurse working at the Anne Arundel Medical Center who's performing this research believes it's less than that number. Which symbol is less than? 